Welcome, friends, to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of New Lenox. We offer these devotions as a way to center ourselves and focus on the divine mystery which we call God. You are welcome to join us, regardless of church membership, your personal belief system, your doubts, or the questions you may have. Our prayer is that we will grow in love of God and love of neighbor through this time together. Now let us center ourselves. Take a deep breath in and let all the worries and stressors of today leave. If only for a moment, breathe in deeply as we now stand on holy ground. Friends, hear the affirmation in our petition. Though the Lord may give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, let your teacher will not hide himself anymore, but your eyes shall see him. When you turn to the right, when you turn to the left, your ears will hear a word behind you. This is the way. Walk in it. O Lord, the night is so dark and my light so dim. Stay with me through the dark night. Bring me to a new and brighter day. Amen. Friends, our reading today comes from Matthew 28. Hear these words. After the Sabbath, at the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the tomb. Look, there was a great earthquake, for an angel from the Lord came down from heaven. Coming to the stone, he rolled it away and sat on it. Now his face was like lightning and his clothes as white as snow. The guards were so terrified that they shook with fear and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Don't be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here because he's raised from the dead, just as he said. Come, see the place where they laid him. Now hurry. Go and tell the disciples, he's been raised from the dead. He's going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. I've given you this message. With great fear and excitement, they hurried away from the tomb and ran to tell the disciples. But Jesus met them and greeted them. They came and grabbed his feet and worshiped him. Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers that I go ahead to Galilee. They will see me there. God bless the reading of the scripture today. I've been saying all week that the worst thing is never the last thing. And this is the last thing. The betrayal, the pain, the grief in the garden, the trial, the torture, the ridicule, the humiliation, the crucifixion, the death, the cold tomb. Those weren't the last thing. New life, resurrection, victory over sin and evil. Those are the last things of our story. And even they're not the last things of our story. But that's the good news. That our systems failed, yet God's system was foolproof. It's hard for us to wrap our heads around because we've created systems that are so broken and messed up from generation to generation that we can't fix them, but God can. And what can we do? We can love. We can sit with people in the brokenness and acknowledge our own brokenness. We can be together. And we can just be in the presence of God, knowing that there will be good times and that someday all will be good. And in the midst of all that, even in this broken mess of a world and a time and a place, there is good things because there is a good God. And there are good gifts. There is hope. There is peace. There's joy. There's love. Friends, our final reading this week comes from the other author of our book here, Norman Shawchuk. And it's uh, it's more of a prayer. And so I know we're going to go into a time of prayer, but I thought this reading would be a nice transition as we end our week. And as we reflect on really what it means to acknowledge the broken state of things, but to have hope that the worst thing is not the last thing. 
defend me from all temptation, that I may ever accept the right and refuse the wrong. Defend me from myself, that in your care, my weakness may not bring me to shame. May my lower nature never seize the upper hand. Defend me from all that would seduce me, and in your power, no tempting voice may cause me to listen. No tempting sight fascinate my eyes. Defend me against the chances and changes of this life, not that I may escape them, but that I may meet them with firm resolve, not that I may be saved from them, but that I may come unscathed through them. Defend me from discouragement in difficulty and from despair in failure, from pride in success and from forgetting you in the day of prosperity. Help me to remember that there is no time when you will fail me and no moment when I do not need you. Grant me this desire that guided by your light and defended by your grace, I may come in safety and bring honor to my journey's end by the defending work of Jesus Christ, my Lord. May it always be so. Amen. As we conclude our week, we come to a time of prayer, thinking about the ways we may offer ourselves as holy and living sacrifices in union with Christ's offering for us. We truly believe that the act of offering our time, our talents, our treasures is transformative because generosity is something that truly moves us inside and out. I offer you today one of my favorite prayers the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer, as a way to offer yourself. Pray with me. I am no longer my own, but yours, O Lord. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by you or laid aside for you. Lifted up by you or brought low by you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine, and I am yours. So be it. Amen. I want to offer a time of silence. Ways that you may offer yourself to this holy mystery, to the great beyond, to God, to love. Take a moment and ponder on the ways you may offer yourself. We pray as Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I send you forth with these words from John Wesley. 
O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.